Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to continue working with line plots. So our learning goal for today says, I can represent a measurement data with line plots. The materials that you'll need for this lesson are your dry erase board and your lesson template that looks like this. So you'll find that in your math book. All right, so let's analyze and represent data from our chart. So here's our chart. What data is shown in the chart? Yeah, the height of sunflower plants. How does the measurement data in this chart compare to the measurement data we plotted in the previous lesson? So if in case you forgot, here's the data that we plotted in the previous lesson. So how does the data in the chart compare? So how are they different? Yeah, well, just looking at it quickly, there's a lot more data to plot, right? There's a lot more data for the height of the sunflower plants than there was for the straws. The numbers are bigger too, right? So we have like numbers in the 60s for the height of the sunflower plants and the straws are like five inches or less than five inches. Let's make a line plot to, to display the data. Think about the steps you need to take to create the line plot. Hmm, let's think about those steps. Before we even get started drawing our line plot, what are some things that we need to think about? Well, what number does the first tick mark on your line plot represent and how do you know? So what's gonna be the very first number? Let's look at our line plot. Pause for just a minute so you have more time to analyze that data and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So what do you think for the first tick mark? It's gonna be 60 inches because it's the smallest measurement. All right, so what number does the last tick mark on your line plot represent and how do you know? Pause the video, look at that data, and then click play when you're ready to tell me the last tick mark on your line plot. All right, friends, so yeah, 64 inches because the biggest, uh, that's the biggest measurement. What interval should you use to draw the tick marks between 60 and 64? And how do you know? Remember, the interval is just like the measurements in between. So pause the video, think about it for just a second, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so look at that data. And we would go half inches because that's the smallest unit in the chart. There's no quarter inches this time, so half inches is where we would be measuring in between. That's our interval. So use the data in the chart to create your line plot. Remember to check off each measurement as you add it to your line plot. So you can give like a little check mark next to it. You don't want to forget that check mark because you might accidentally plot that data more than one time if you don't check it off. So pause the video, create your line plot, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's our line plot. So we have our line, our endpoint is 60. Remember, we know that our interval is half inches. So we would go, um, oh, sorry, I forgot our endpoint, right? 64, so we would go our half inches in between. So 60, 60 and a half, 61. 61 and a half, 62, 62 and a half, 63, 63 and a half, and 64. I'm going to plot my data. So 61 has one, check it off. Then go to 63, because I'm going to go across, check it off. 62, check it off. 61, check it off. 62 and a half, check it off. Okay, and through the magic of teacher magic, I'm going to label the, um, information so give the title the measurement and what the x represents and now the teacher magic i'm going to complete my line plot for you so just like look how fast Whoosh. man that's teacher magic right there now friends i had to shift over the title of my line plot because i'm going to answer some ask some questions okay as we analyze so i just need a little bit more space over there otherwise you would center the title of your line plot all right, so what is a true statement that you can come up with that is about the height of the sunflower plants and Mrs. Shout's garden? 
So pause the video. Come up with anything that you can say that's a true statement about this. There's, there's several answers that are correct with this. So don't worry, there's not one answer that I'm looking for. Just what is one thing that you could say that is true about this data? All right, friends, pause a few more time. Otherwise, here's some of the things that I heard. The most common height is 62 and a half inches, right? Because that has the most X's. There's only one plant that is 60 inches tall. So it only has one X. And 61, 61 and a half, and 63 all have the same number of plants because they all have three. Now, those are just some things. If you came up with something different, rock on. That's awesome. Are these statements true of the data in the chart? So not just a line plot. Is it true of the data in the chart? Yes, right? Because it's the same data just displayed or shared differently. So in the chart, it just has the numbers listed. In my line plot, I'm able to look and see that I have all those X's to represent each measurement. So how does having the data displayed as a line plot help you think and talk about the data? How does it help you instead of just having that chart? Why can the line plot help you? So pause the video, think about that for a second, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So some of the things I heard was, like, I can easily see the number of plants for each measurement. So I think that's totally true because you can see that like 61 has three X's, so that's three plants. Otherwise, I would have to go through and look through that line plot, kind of like with a fine tooth comb of her looking and saying, oh, there's one 61. Oh, there's another one that's two. There's another one that's three. I could make a mistake when I look at that. So plotting in the line plot definitely helps with that. I also heard I can quickly see the most common and least common measurements. Oh, that's true, right? Because you have all those X's to show you. The most X's is the most common and the least amount of X's is the least common. So let's analyze our data in our line plot. So what are the three most frequent measurements in order from shortest to tallest? So pause the video, find the three measurements that are um, the most frequent from shortest to tallest. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so I came up with 62, 62 and a half, and 63 inches. Okay, those have the most X's. What is the total number of plants that measure 62, 62 and a half, and 63 inches? So pause the video, look at your line plot to find out the total number for 62, 62 and a half, and 63 inches. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so here I have 62, 63, or 62 and a half, and 63. Those are the only parts I'm worried about for this problem. If I count those up, I have 16 plants. How many plants were measured in all? So pause the video, find out how many plants were measured in all, and click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. 30 plants, right? So you just have to count the X's for all of those plants. Write a number sentence to show how many plants do not measure 62, 62 and a half, and 63 inches. How many do not measure that? So pause the video, write your number sentence, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. So here I have 30 minus, and I'm going to subtract here because I know that from one of our previous questions was 16. So 30 minus 16, what does that equal, friends? 14. You could also do that by counting the numbers that are not 62 and a half, or 62 and 63. Okay, if you counted what's in those two boxes right there, you would also have 14. Okay, but using a number sentence, that's the correct number sentence. Most of the sunflower plants measure between 62 and 63 inches. True or false? 
What do you think, friends? Yeah, it's true because 16 plants measure between 62 and 63 inches. And that's more than 14 from when we wrote that number sentence. What do you notice about the location of the three most frequent measurements on the number line? Here's our most three frequent. Pause the video. What do you notice about those? They're right next to each other. And the most frequent measurement is in between the second and third most frequent measurements. Those are just some of the things, right? What do you notice about the data before the three most frequent measurements? Pause the video, think about that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. Yeah, it goes one, two, three, three, right, for like the number of plants. The number of plants goes up and then stays the same. So it goes from one and then two and then three of the same. And the number of plants increases or stays the same as it gets close to the most frequent measurement. So those are just some of the things that you might have noticed. How about the data after the three most frequent measurements? So pause the video, think about that. All right, friends, so here's some of the things I noticed. That it goes three, then two. It starts to go back down. And the number of sunflower plants decreases for each measurement. Cover up the bottom three rows of the data in your chart. So notice right now I have all of the rows shown. I'm going to cover up just the bottom three rows. You guys do the same. We're going to erase the X's on your line plot and create a new line plot with this data. So take away our X's and you're going to create a new line plot with this data. So pause the video. Just these top three rows in your chart. Make your new line plot and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here with that teacher magic again, I plotted those points, okay? Make sure again that you check those off. I'm gonna leave up in the top corner our previous line plot when we use the whole chart for our data because we're kind of going to analyze between the two line plots. So that's what that little one is under our chart. So did the three most frequent measurements change when you plotted less data? I want you to pause. Think about, did the most frequent measurements change from our new line plot to our old line plot? Yeah, now there's three most frequent measurements are 61, 61 and a half, and 62 inches. That means that most of the sunflowers in Mrs. Shout's garden are between 61 and 62 inches tall. No, wait, that's not right, I heard someone say. We saw earlier that the most frequent are between 62 and 63 inches tall. Well, hmm. How did using less data change how we can talk about the heights of the sunflower plants? Pause the video, think about that for just a minute. Yeah, so when we use less data, it changed the most frequent measurements. How did the shape of the line plot change when we use less data? So pause the video, think about that. And then click play when you're ready to talk about it together. Yeah, the height of the line plot changed with more data, right? So in our top little one that we have, the height went from, the most X's went from seven and to three now in our new line plot. The three most frequent measurements shifted to the left on the number line. And except for the three most frequent measurements, all other measurements only have one X. Ah, so that's definitely another thing that changed. All right, so great job, friends. You guys nailed it with representing data with line plots and analyzing that data too. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.